Here I've got this nice integral that was generalized from a viewer suggestion. So let's see what we've got. We have the integral from b to infinity of e to the minus x squared plus 2bx plus c dx. And the important thing here is that we've got a quadratic polynomial in the exponent. That's going to allow us to use a fairly standard strategy, which I've made a video of before, and solve this pretty easily. Okay, so let's see. Let's take this quadratic polynomial that's in the exponent and then complete the square. So I'll do that over here. So we've got minus x squared plus 2 times bx plus c. So I can factor a minus sign out, and that gives me x squared minus 2bx. And then I've got a plus c outside. Now I want to add something in here so that this becomes a perfect square binomial. But if I do that, I also need to add or subtract something on the outside. So let's see what will work. So I can take half the coefficient of x and square it. That's the standard rule for completing the square for a quadratic polynomial. So half of this will be negative b squared will be b squared. So I'll add b squared here. But that means that I've changed this polynomial by adding b squared. But wait a minute, we haven't added b squared, we've subtracted b squared because of this minus sign. So that means in order to fix this, so we haven't added anything, we need to add b squared on the outside. And now notice if I were to get rid of these parentheses, the b squared and the b squared would cancel because of this minus sign and we would be left with this. Okay, so let's see how that's helpful. Notice now we can take this thing that's in parentheses and factor it as x minus b quantity squared, and then we have b squared plus c on the outside. And that really motivates us to do a change of variables here. Maybe we would let u equal x minus b. But then what will du be? Well, that's pretty easy because that's just a linear function, so we can just take the derivative du will be dx. Okay, nice. Well, what about the bounds of integration? So these are x bounds of integration, and we'll need to change this to u bounds of integration. So if x equals b, then that means u is equal to b minus b, in other words, u is equal to zero. And then as x approaches infinity, then u will obviously also approach infinity. So the upper bound will not change. Okay, so let's see what we can do from here. Well, notice that this dx term will just change to du from what we noticed right here. And then this thing, which is in the exponent, will change to minus u squared plus b squared plus c from what we noticed over here, given the fact that this is our u. Okay, so let's see how we've transformed this integral and what we can do to finish this off. So this is now going to be the integral from zero up to infinity of e to the minus u squared plus b squared plus c du. But now b and c are constants, so we can somehow pull those out of the integral. Well, using exponent rules, if we have addition in the exponents, that means we have multiplication. So that tells us that we can take out an e to the b squared plus c, and then we'll have the integral from zero up to infinity of e to the minus u squared du. And then from here, we would probably want to extend this over the whole real line. So using the fact that this is an even function, I can extend this to the whole real line by going from minus infinity to infinity. But that means I need to multiply this by one half to take into account that I'm doubling the value of that integral. Okay, nice. And now where can we go from here? Well, from here, I'm just going to use the result from a previous video that I did, and it's actually one of my favorite videos that I've ever made. I put a lot of work into it, although it didn't get a ton of views. So now is the time for you guys to check it out. I will admit that it's kind of a stunt video where I combine mathematics with one of my favorite passions. But again, I'm really excited about this video. I think it has the possibility to reach a lot of people outside of math if we could just get it like 
trending again. Okay, so needless to say, this integral right here is equal to the square root of pi by the results of that video. So now in the end, we'll have that our final value will be the square root of pi times e to the b squared plus c all over two. And then, well, maybe we should talk about exactly how this is generalized from a viewer. So the integral that the viewer sent was essentially this integral, except b was equal to one half and c was equal to zero. And that occurred down here as well. So the integral was from one half to infinity, and then we had e to the minus x squared plus x. Okay, but now notice that we can easily calculate this case by setting b equal to half and c equal to zero. And that's gonna turn this into the square root of pi. And then we'll have e to the one half squared, which is e to the one quarter, but that's the same thing as the fourth root of e all over two. And I actually think there's a nicer way to write this. We can take this square root of pi and we can turn it into a fourth root of pi squared. And then we can combine those radicals. So we've got the fourth root of pi squared times e over two. And so that's the final answer for the viewer suggested problem. And that's a good place to stop.